Now this is literally the day after you saw that video where I was fishing that cold front moving in. It was 80 degrees or so that day. It's been in the upper 70s. That cold front came through and just blasted this water column. You can tell the wind's blowing, but I'm, I'm fishing this lagoon right here. You see, there's like a cutout and this cutout is a protection from the wind. So yesterday I was fishing wind blown. I was fishing little pockets and eddies and different things where fish would be laying on the other end of the wind looking to fatten up and get some easy meals. And today I'm looking for that wind protection. Oh, and Ben just fell on my tackle box. <laughs> Did you fall on my tackle box, you silly? Oh my goodness. Now the trick is gonna be here is to both fish, catch a fish and have Ben not injure himself. It's just me and Ben fishing. <laughs> ben doesn't want to fish, by the way. He, uh, he just wants uh, daddy to catch a fish while he pummels my tackle. Oh, uh, I just missed one right there. See, and there's a the difference from yesterday. Yesterday they gulped that down. That was just a little bump right there. So there's, there's a big difference right in that first bite right there. There we go. And there's a the fish. See, I just slowed it down. Got the bass, just like that. Good take too, right there. Oh, barely hooked barely hooked. Look at that, Ben. Woo, that's a big fish, huh, Ben? Whoa, there it is. There's that Mini Max once again, getting a nice bass right there. The day after the cold front, Ben's petting his fish. Nice job, bud. And that's a nice bass. I mean, that is just a nice, nice pond bass. Nothing wrong with that. Nobody's going to argue that. There you go. Oh, here, give it a little size comparison. There's Ben, and there's the bass. Yeah, you wanna touch the bass, bud? Nice fish, definitely a nice fish. And again, we just adapted our tactics right there to trigger that bite. All right, bye, bud. And all right, fish a lot. So let me show you exactly what I'm using here and exactly how I rig it up to trigger bass, both before that storm hits and of course in post frontal conditions. And right here, you see me pull out a strike king rage tail this is a rage bug it's four inches long and this is the delta red color now what i really like to do is match this up on my z-man mini max chatter baits and for me i just love these baits it's just an ideal chatter bait to use when you're really trying to trigger bites and of course uh, the mini max chatter bait that i'm using is in half an ounce so right here this bait is about four inches long and i'm going to need to shorten it up it's just too big to put on the mini max so i'm going to take a pair of scissors and I'm going to make a diagonal incision on both ends of the bait. So you can see here without me cutting it, the nose of the rage bug is a little bit pointed. So I'm just going to kind of make a triangle when I cut it and I'm just going to keep that point a little bit pointed as well. I'm just shortening this thing up by about half an inch and then it's ready to go on my mini max chatterbait. Now the reason why I prefer this rage bug in the situation that I'm fishing here is because it's flat. So this will come over wood structure, rocks. There's a lot of sticky underwater structures there that I'm fishing and I'm trying to target these bass in. And this flat lure will come over it just so much nicer and prevent me from getting hung up. So I also ripped the little paddles off, the arms off there. I'm just left with the cut bait right there and the bottom of it, you know, the, the crawdad piece on the end there. So now it's ready to go. It's perfect to be rigged up. Now the number one thing you have to focus on when rigging this thing up onto anything, whether it's a chatterbait, a spinnerbait, what even a jig head, whatever you might be rigging it up on is it's got to go on straight. If it doesn't go on straight, what you're going to do is you're going to have like a helicoptering effect and it's just not going to look natural and it's not going to trigger bites. So always, always, always take the time to make sure that your trailers here are going on straight and that's exactly what I'm going to do here. You also want to make sure that that hook comes out in the middle of the bait, not on one side or the other. Other. So it's got to be straight and the hook's got to be coming out in the middle. And that is a perfectly rigged up rage bug on a mini max chatterbait right there. And you can tell it's extremely effective for catching fish, both when you're fishing it quite aggressively and when you have to slow it down and trigger some more finicky post frontal fish. 
Hello again, Fishalots. Johnny Fishalot here. In a previous episode, I showed you how you could really take advantage of some super aggressive big old bass right before a storm hits. Now, the question is, the storm rolls through, the fish were super active, they stocked up on all sorts of food. Well, how do you catch fish after the storm? Turns out they're not as aggressive and you may have to adjust your tactics just a little bit. So stay tuned, let's cover it in detail, and of course, let's get into it. Now, as I pointed out in the previous video, it is just a great idea when a storm is coming through right before a big storm to just fish fast, cover a lot of water, fish loud baits. And what I mean by that are baits that give off a lot of vibration, a lot of noise, and they're just loud under the water. Chatter baits are a perfect bait for this. Spinner baits, crank baits, something that those fish can really hone in on. And even top water lures. Right before a storm comes in, top water lures are ideal because you catch a lot of bass and it's a ton of fun to get a topwater strike. So like I said, in this previous episode we were fishing fast, we were covering a lot of water, and we were taking advantage of fish that were just becoming super aggressive. Think about human beings and relate them to fish. I often like to do this and I think it goes overlooked by a lot of fish a lot out there. You have a big storm coming in, let's say it's a big snowstorm. Well think about it, what do people typically do? They're gonna run out to the store, they're gonna stock up on milk and bread, and nowadays they steal all the TP so nobody else can have any, right? And they're just kind of getting ready for the storm. Well, the fish do the same thing. Their version of TP and milk is feeding heavily right before the storm comes through. Then of course, when the storm does blow through and passes over, right? Just like people, you know, you may poke your head out, you look around, you're like, oh, well, maybe there's some damage here. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm all right. Storm wasn't too bad, right? But you already have all your milk, all your bread and all your TP. So you're pretty content and you're not nearly as active right before the storm. And the fish do the exact same thing. Perfect cast. That is exactly where you want. Oh, there he is. There you go, Ben. Perfect cast equals a fish. Look, Ben, got another one. <laughs> Look at that, Ben. We got ourselves a bullhead catfish. Now, a great tip here when handling these catfish. You see how I took them right there? Don't grab them with those spines, especially on those little guys. Those spines could really get you there in the dorsal fin. So just grab them just like that. I got one spine pinned in between my index finger and middle finger and the other one laying up against my thumb. And you will not get pinched or tagged by doing that. Boy, he got that down. Yeah, you like that too, bud? And there you go. That was a perfect cast in that area. You know, these fish are also looking to move up into those areas where these bait fish are looking to warm up. So there you go. Again, that was a secluded area right across the pond, protected from the wind. And that's where these fish are hitting today. And another thing to keep in mind when you're facing post frontal conditions is water movement. Keep in mind during the storm, it dumped a ton of water, ton of rain. You're gonna have overflowing ponds and lakes and rivers and secondary streams. And those secondary streams and runoffs create water movement. I bang on this drum all the time here at Fishing with Johnny Fish a lot. Water movement is essential for predatory fish because they want nature to bring food to them. Just just like human beings after a storm when you order that pizza. You want somebody else to bring the food to you. You just kind of made it through a storm. You're not feeling as active as you were before the storm and you're looking for easy access to food. Enter in the bass. Same exact scenario. So I'm gonna fish those deeper channels. I'm gonna fish those ledges, especially ledges with cover, but if you can find ledges with cover and that water movement, a secondary stream or an overflowing stream running into your lake or pond or whatever you might be fishing, that is ideal. Even overflows in a pond or lake where water is rushing out of a lake, going maybe into a retention pond or something like that, another great area to fish because those fish are just gonna stay in the structure in that deeper water where they were comfortable during the storm and they're gonna look to take advantage of easy meals. So if I were you fish lots out there, I would look for that as well in post frontal conditions. The other thing you really wanna look for is areas that look like they have aggressively feeding fish, right? Fishy type areas. What great advice, fish 
fishy areas, right? But what I mean by that are the presence of birds, okay? Bait fish in the water, nervous bait fish, areas where you could hear bass feeding. In conditions after the storm, what you need to keep in mind is that fish are going to still stay in that deeper water. Remember, in the previous episode, I said it's not good enough just to find shallow water where fish might be feeding, but often that shallow water adjacent to deeper water where the fish can fall back during the storm is going to be ideal because that's really where fish are going to stage up and start feeding heavily. So as the lightning and thunder comes down, it's been my experience that those fish will go deeper. They're very uncomfortable in lightning conditions in shallower water. Very typical to human beings, right? If a human being is out in a thunderstorm, they'll typically seek shelter and bass do the exact same thing. They're going to find themselves some cover, they're going to go a little bit deeper, and it's very, very likely that those fish are going to be there when the storm passes through. So in this video, what I'm targeting in spots or fish location is that deeper structure, those deeper ledges. I'm fishing just deeper water where I can take advantage of those fish still kind of holding out, waiting for their pizza, so to speak, in that deeper water. Let's talk about the rest of the gear here. And so you notice I'm fishing with a Shimano Claris bait casting rod. And this rod is absolutely awesome for horizontal presentations of baits, including chatter baits, spinner baits, crank baits, you name it. And that's because it's really a moderate action rod and it's medium heavy. I would say it's more medium to medium heavy. Again, there's no industry standard for terminology between heavy, medium heavy, fast action, extra fast action rods. But I'll tell you what I look for when I'm fishing with horizontal baits. And that is really a moderate to moderate fast action rod. You can tell right here on this big fish, this rod is bending pretty much right down the middle of the rod. So that really means it's moderate. And again, I do have some oomph to this rod. It is a medium heavy rod. It's also rated for eight to 17 pound test line and up to a half ounce of a lure. So I could really handle some big fish with this and it's light enough. It's a graphite rod where I can feel just about everything with it. So Shimano Claris is really a great bait casting rod. It doesn't break the bank. Very affordable and I match that up with a Daiwa Team Pro fishing reel. Excellent reel. I've had this for years. Super smooth. Again, super affordable. Or you could also match this up with lose rods, which I'll put in the description below as well for the gear. And I got 10 pound, you know what? It's either Power Pro, J Braid, or Suffix. I can't actually remember the kind of braid I put on this, but it's a braided line. It's 10 pound test line. And you know what? All three of those uh, companies will work just fine. These braided lines are all made really great. So again, that's 10 pound test line. It's on a Daiwa Pro fishing reel and a Shimano Claris fishing rod. And I absolutely love Love this combination. I'll put everything in the description below so you can find it. And if you click on the links, it's a great way to support the channel so that I can make more awesome fishing videos to help you catch more fish. So the other suggestion I have is just by selecting the lure, a correct lure that will actually force you to slow down the presentation. And I got tons of tips and tricks on how exactly you could do that. So just a quick little lure change could catch you a million times more fish. And if you're interested in those tips, click on this video right here while I'll show you everything you need to know on how to switch up your lure to match the presentation, to match the mood of the fish so you can catch more fish.